Today I'm going to show you what's inside of a fuel pump and how it works on your car. The fuel pump is located on top of the back seat here. We've got this axis cover. We've got a grommet here to remove for the electrical connector. And then I can pull up and remove the cover. Now I'm going to remove this little tab here. And then I can remove the fuel line. It's going to be some fuel spilling out so I've got my brother's sock here to sap it up. And I'm going to remove eight eight millimeter bolts that hold the fuel pump on. All right, now I'm going to remove this axis plate cover. All right, and now I can remove the fuel pump and sender assembly. All right, and this is the assembly removed. And this is what the inside of the gas tank looks like. So this here is the fuel pump removed from the vehicle. We've got a couple of things here. This is the electrical connector at the top here. Then over here on the side, we have the fuel sending unit, which is responsible for determining the level of fuel in the tank. We've got a sensor over here. And then here we've got this fuel filter, which is like a sock, and fuel gets sucked up through here and it goes through the fuel pump, which is a DC motor in here, and it exits out the top over here. So as an overview, we've got the entire assembly in case in the gas tank here. We've got the filter sock on the bottom that picks up the gasoline and it goes through the DC motor. Then it goes out to the fuel filter here where it's filtered out. And then it goes out to the engine. Now any excess pressure that builds up in here will go back into the tank and that's controlled by this regulator. Now separately from that we've got the float that controls the gas gauge and the empty level sensor that controls the light on your dashboard. Alright so I'm just going to demonstrate how the fuel pump works. I've got a pan of water. I've got a line connected to the fuel pump here and I'm going to power it over here and you can see it pumps out the water. So to test out this fuel sending unit I'm going to connect over here the first pin and the second pin and now if you see the multimeter I'm reading roughly 109 ohms at the empty position and if I bring the float all the way up to the top I'm reading about half an ohm. So the needle on the dashboard actually uses this variable resistor here to determine the exact position of the level of the fuel in the tank. So I'm going to proceed to disassemble the fuel pump to see what's inside. Okay and then we've got this bushing here, it's just rubber. Over here we have the outlet for the fuel pressure regulator. So there's a little ring here that I remove and then I can remove the fuel filter stock. And you can see how much dirt has built up over time that this sock is prevented from going inside of the pump. So now I'm going to remove the tabs that go around the top of the fuel pump. So now I'm going to separate this motor from the rest of the housing. Okay, and that comes out like that. So the fuel pump is the heart of the sending unit. Now fuel will enter here and exit here through the DC motor guts to keep it cool. All right, now I'm going to open up these tabs here. Now the way this fuel pump works is actually pretty interesting. The intake side here which lines up with the intake side over here is where fuel comes in on this side here and it goes into the fuel pump and we've got this little gear with paddles on it that moves round and round with the rotation of the motor and then it exits over here at this point whereby it goes into the DC motor itself and comes out the other side. Now over here on the cap you'll see that it gets shallower and shallower as the spiral goes in as it compresses the fluid into the motor. There's also this escape hole on the back here and this is what the gear looks like and on the DC motor side, again, we have a spiral that gets thinner and shallower as it goes up and then it goes into the DC motor. Alright, I'm going to attempt to chop open this DC motor here. And we've opened the motor there. That's what it looks like. We've got the two brushes here. They are spring loaded. And then we've got the rotor inside of here. And then on the inside here, we have magnets. And you can see inside the top there is where the hole where the fuel enters and it goes around this rotor here, cooling it off while it turns and then it exits out the top here. This is the fuel pressure regulator and the housing. Fuel goes in here from the fuel pump and it comes out here and excess fuel exits over here. We use the pliers here, pull that out, just got an o-ring on it and then I can slide out the regulator. So this here is the valve that regulates the fuel. Fuel will go in here, there's a little spring on the inside here that when enough force is reached it will allow excess fuel that's over pressure to escape back into the tank. So just to demonstrate what's inside, I'm going to chop it open. Now if you look closely inside of here, you can see that there's a little spring. If I release the tension on the spring here, and this is the little membrane inside here that moves up and down according to the pressure. Now I'm going to open up the fuel filter cartridge. Alright, so we'll go ahead and pry this open. You can see that this is the inlet here where the fuel comes from the pump. And it goes through this filter-like material, which looks like a corrugated cardboard, before it goes back through here to the outlet. The outlet will either go to the engine, or excess pressure will go down through this bypass here to the regulator valve and go back into the tank if it's overpressured. You can see when I juke it with a screwdriver, it's actually like a felt-like material. This here is the sensor that detects when the gasoline level is low and it puts the warning light on your dashboard. It's got this thick wire holding it up here and then a thin signal wire that goes back to the terminals here. So now I'm going to remove the center unit from the housing and the back of the housing with the connector. Now I can disconnect the float 
I'm gonna open it up to see what's inside. But there's a foam material on the inside here. It makes it really light and buoyant when it's floating in gas. And now if we look closely at the center unit, it's got this little spring-loaded contact on it that goes out to the ground pin on the connector. Now if you look closely inside of there, you'll see that there's actually tiny little gradations and it's not an infinitely variable resistor like you'd think. Now the resistance of that is picked up by the second pin over here. Now in order to remove this arm, I'm going to turn it all the way to the full position. And then I can pick it off of the board here. And it's got a little spring on the inside. And you can see where the arm connects to the ground connection over here. And now I'll remove the circuit board. And the circuit board is just a piece of ceramic with printed resistors on it that add up as a series circuit as the level moves towards the empty position. Now I'm going to open up the sensor to see what's inside. So inside of here we actually have a little resistor looking device that reads the level of the fluid as it goes up and down. So I'm going to demonstrate how the low level light works. You can see here it's currently reading an open circuit. If I put it inside of some water, you can see it starts reading about 2 kilo ohms and that will go directly to the light on your dashboard. And now if I remove it, it goes back to open circuit. And there you have it, these are all the components that go into making the fuel pump in your gas tank.